What is going on? Holy, I can't even get him up in the boat. Oh my gosh, guys. Look at this freaking fish. Oh, what is going on, guys? This is Gene Jensen, and today I want to talk about the baits that I'm going to be throwing in March. Look at this freaking toad. <laughs> All right, so what does March mean for what the bass are doing, uh, depending on where you are? I'm gonna start off here in the south. We're getting we're getting those warmer nights that are warming up the water temperature. The, the nights are warmer than the, than the water temperature, so that they continue to warm up more and more and more, and it really, it triggers these fish to move shallow and to get into cover and get onto hard spots and feed like crazy. They start to move back to towards the backs of the creeks. They start to move back towards the pockets that they're spawning on, but they always stop on certain things like hard bottom transitions where a bank may turn from hard big rock to little rock or sand to rock or just a change in the bottom along the along the bank. But they move up shallow. Today here on this lake, they're all about eight feet deep. They're they're hanging out. They're waiting for, for something to eat to come by and they're waiting for the temperature and the light to get perfect to spawn uh, is one of the big things. Now, a little bit further up, you're still in a solid pre-spawn. Your fish should move up. If you're in ice out, same thing. And a couple of these baits I'm gonna use from basically ice out until the water temperature gets into the 50, high 50s and the 60s. But let's start with the first bait. All right, so uh, the first, first bait is the one that you saw me catch that giant on and i and i've actually caught several giants on i caught another one where uh uh <laughs> stupid me i didn't have the microphone turned on so that's that's dumb as dumb but anyway so i've done this intro multiple times with multiple big fish and finally got it to where uh to where i got a pretty good intro but the the bait that i was throwing is the one i love to throw in march March in a lake that has a uh, gizzard shad. March is when the gizzard shad spawn. They get up shallow on the hard bottom and on the humps and things like that. And they spawn and the big females, that's where they go to feed up to spawn. And so that's what I was doing this morning. But uh, I want you to look at this. This is the trick shad from bull shad. And I'd also throw a regular bull shad anywhere from six to 10 inches long, big heavy hooks, 22 pound test uh, tatsu, cigar tatsu and a heavy swim bait rod. This is a Dobbins Fury, of course. Uh, it's, a, it's what I've got right now for uh, swim baits and glide baits, but I'm throwing it on a Casking Mega Jaws, seven, I think it's a seven five to one gear ratio reel. And uh, just been a really, really good setup. And man, oh man, oops, sorry. These, these bass have been destroying it. It's one of those baits that you can cover a lot of shallow water with, but if you don't see the gizzard shad, um, and you don't see big bait, you can still throw it. And uh, the big girls are looking for an easy bite. They're looking for to feed up before the spawn. And it is amazing. If you want to learn about how I fish it and how it's modified and everything else, be sure to, uh, to check out this video right here that I filmed a few, few months ago with a swim bait expert. All right, next bait. All right, so before we introduce the next one, all these baits, the, the, the affiliate links and the links to find these baits online are down in the, in the description. Rods, reels, line, everything's gonna be down in the description so you guys can go take a look at that. But the second one is one that people forget about. It's an old school bait. It's one that I've been throwing for years and years. It is a pre-spawn staple for me and I've caught hundreds if not thousands of bass with this bait covering water, working along the bank like you want to be doing anyway. And it is a phenomenal bait. And what that is, it is a flat sided balsa wood square bill or, or a, you know, this isn't really a square bill, but a balsa wood bait. And the reason this is so good is that it has a subtle vibration. Doesn't have hardly any rattles. This one has zero. I don't like hardly any rattles. There's a bunch of other flat sided. And I'm gonna leave a list of those down in the description of all the ones that I use the most when I'm pre-spawning. But this one right here, this is a PH Customs balsa wood crankbait. 
absolutely one of my favorites. It destroys them. I, th I think I buy a about five or six at least every three or four or five years and you can find them at shows and stuff like that but i'll leave a link to his website uh down in the description and also leave uh i think tackle warehouse carries some too but anyway i'll stop with all the the link stuff but anyway all right so the rod that i'm going to pair this with is a crankbait rod a short crankbait rod this is a six foot eight square bill rod uh it's a speed demon from cast king and i've got it paired with a kestrel uh bait caster and uh, I like a seven, you know, seven speed reel, something like that. 10 to 12 pound test. This is Seaguar uh, Abrazex because I'm, I like to beat it off a of timber and fish the thick stuff with it. And that Abrazex tends, tends to, to stay pretty, uh, um, it doesn't, doesn't nick up that, that bad or that easily. So pretty dang good. All right, so my next one is a jerk bait. And this time of year, I tend to use duo clips more than I do any other time. And this is just a clip that goes on the end of the line. Uh, it's not a swivel. Just makes it really quick and easy to, to uh, change things out. Of course, I've got a, got a jerk bait in my hand. And it loves to get hooked onto all everything, including my breeches. All right. So a jerk bait. I'm going to throw it on that same on the same rod that I throw a um, throw a square bill on. Medium, moderate, six foot eight, same line, ten to twelve pound test, and this is something that you can you can work it around timber and stuff like that. But on points, on hard or long rock and stuff like that, this time of the year, I don't know what it is about that jerk jerk pause action. But it really does drive the bass mad, and it makes it makes them come and get the bait. Um, play around with your cadence, play around your depth, and stuff like that. But I, my favorite ones, and I know this one's an expensive one, is a Vision 110. I also use the 13 Fishing uh, Loco Special, which is a, a one of those sleepers. But I don't know now that. Um, now that Rapala bought 13, I don't know if they're going to be making those anymore. So scoop them up. I absolutely, those are great. Uh, another one I'll throw is a Strike King um, jerk bait or the KVD uh, jerk jerk bait. That one's a really good one. But match the color with the water clarity. Um, I don't like to fish jerk baits in real real muddy water, but stained to clear. I'm gonna throw, you know, in stained water, I'm gonna throw something that's not very see-through, and in clear water like we have here, I'm gonna throw something super, super clear. That's it, it's pretty simple. Jerk, jerk, pause, go around and set the hook when the fish bites. I don't know what else to say about it. So, you pull up on a point, or you're sitting in the back of a pocket, and you look down in your fish finder, and you see hard bottom, and you see rock, um, and you see, um, uh, scattered rock and chunk rock and stuff like that. This is a little bit different. Well, the bait is what you would throw around rocks, but the way I fish it is totally different. Let me show you. First of all, that bait is a football head. I have two colors. I have green pumpkin with a little bit of orange. This is a Picasso uh, football head tungsten. I don't think tungsten really matters with this, but um, it's, it's just a smaller package and I like those light wire hooks. But uh, I have a green pumpkin and I have a black and blue is what I fish with. And I try to, to, to pair it with some type of a kicking trailer. Um, and the way I fish it, well, first of all, let's talk about the rod. All right, so the rod that I'm fishing is a, um, a Cast King 7 foot 2 heavy fast. I don't like an extra fast. I don't like too much, don't like it too stiff. And this one has a little bit more tip than um, than like a heavy fat an extra fast will be so it's got, it's got a little bit more give especially for this technique um, I, I fish it on a seven five to one gear ratio reel typically when I'm throwing jigs and things like that I like an eight speed reel that way I can get I can catch up with the fish really really fast but I find that a seven five works really works a lot better um, than uh, for this technique anyway. 20 pound test or 22 pound te test fluorocarbon you can get by with 17 pound with this rod because it does have a little bit of tip and a uh, light wire hook and things like that but the technique is pretty simple you pull up on a point and these fish are chasing uh but they're they tend but they're sitting down on the bottom like they are today i'm gonna throw it out i'm gonna let it sink to the bottom 
and I'm gonna slowly start to reel it and then I'm gonna stop. And what I just did is I just brought that, when it fell down to the bottom, the line is, is curved. And I started to reel a little bit and it brought the bait up off the bottom too far, but it straightened that line out. And then I just let that bait fall back down to the bottom. So I got a straight line. And then I slowly, slowly reel. And let me see if I can do this in this timber without getting this football head hung up. But I let it sit down and I'm literally just like this and I'm crawling it, crawling it through that, t through that wood or through that, that rock. And I want that bait to be on the bottom. I want it to be able to hit those rocks and pop up in the air and hit those rocks and pop up in the air. But it's a steady, slow crawl on the bottom. I don't know what it is, but the big ones, it and they will hit it and they'll hit it hard coming at you. And you just cr you crack them pretty hard with it. Love it, love it. I trust me, guys, that is a great way to catch them. All right, last one. The last one is a chatterbait. Yes, in fire crawl. Um, both the, this is the uh, the jackhammer and the, uh, um, gosh, what's the little one called? The uh, mini mag, mini max, mini max, mini max. Well, I don't know why I'm forgetting this, but anyway, mini max uh, uh, chatterbait. It is, I don't know what it is about this color this time of the year on any lake. Just take it and throw it out, let it sink to the bottom, and then slowly reel it back, reel it through grass and stuff like that. Be a little bit more careful around timber. Doesn't like timber at all. But that color of a chatterbait is, it's great. It works great. Best thing to do with it, though, is put it on a medium heavy moderate rod. I don't have one in the boat. Um, I'm actually, actually, let me see. All right, so this rod, this is actually a Speed Demon swim bait rod. It's their paddle tail swim bait, seven foot six. It's a medium heavy moderate. It's got a lot of bend into it to get to give the fish the bait, so you don't jerk it out of the fish's mouth. But it goes to a really good backbone, so you can you can hammer it home. But any medium heavy moderate or a medium fast rod will do. I have it on a seven three to one gear ratio reel or seven two to one gear ratio reel. This is a Mega Jaws from Cast King. And uh, I think I have 17 pound test fluorocarbon on this. 15 to 17 is about right. A, Bra a Brazex is great because it's abrasion resistant, but but just a good quality fluorocarbon would be great. Um, but work it along the bank, do the same thing as a crankbait, and mm, catch some giants, especially on that red color. But uh, but yeah, that's the baits. That's the five baits for for pre-spawn for March. Um, and if you guys are up north jerk bait and jig okay as that at from ice out until the water temperature gets into the high 50s jerk bait and jig and you will you can't go wrong